We are talking to Roy Jones Jr., former uh, four divisions uh, world champion, 48 hours before fight with Paweł Gwarzewski. We can say now it's official that you are fighting Paweł Gwarzewski? No, we can't say it's official yet. They say they can make a final decision tomorrow. I'm sure Kostegi's still been training, keeping himself right. Um, it's kind of tough, you know, but it's just uh, one of the things you have to go through in boxing. This makes it very difficult for me um, to be able to try to focus on two opponents <laughs> at once. And still, right now today, they're still not a for sure opponent. But good thing is, I didn't prepare for either opponent. I prepared for the Polish public. My job is to come here and entertain the Polish public, give them something that they've never seen before, the best pound for pound to ever do it in action. Yeah, let's start uh, from the beginning of your journey with the sport. You in boxing was successful because of your amazing athletic abilities, physical abilities. Why did, have you chosen boxing, not basketball, f for example? You played basketball. Yeah, I played basketball, but I was better suited for boxing. I kind of quickly figured out that my mental capacity was better well-rounded for boxing than any other sport, uh, mainly because I'm the type of a guy, and don't take this the wrong way, but it's good to say, I'm the type of guy that wants to, to, to stand for my own wrongdoings, or my own right doing. So if I do it right, I want to benefit from it. If I do it wrong, I want to benefit from it. I want to suffer from it, because I should take uh, responsibility for myself. I played football, I loved football, American football. But sometimes in football, other people make mistakes that cost us. I play basketball, I love basketball even more. But sometimes other people make mistakes that can cost you. And boxing is you and your own mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you would, if you were not a professional fighter, you would rather be in some other individual sport than in team sports? No, if I wasn't a professional fighter, I prefer basketball or football because I would take the risk. I would just learn to be open to accept that people do make mistakes, including me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. I'm just saying that I like the fact that my control of my mistakes can determine how good or bad I can be. Mm -hmm. So I can control. When other sports, I can't control everybody. I will control me. Mm -hmm. Your first major success was supposed to be Golden Olympic uh, in Beijing. And you, you, and you was wrapped from this win? Korea. In Seoul, Korea, in not Beijing. No, no, yeah, sorry, sorry. In Seoul. Uh, can you describe the feeling after this, this loss? And uh, have you ever, at, this, at that time or uh, later in your career, have thoughts about giving up the sports? Yeah, I wanted to give up the sport right away because of the loss. I'm like, if you win and you beat somebody that's bad and you still lose, what are you going to do it for? I mean, why would you continue to fight if you fight and you beat the heck out of somebody, you win, and they're going to take it from you anyway? Why keep fighting? But when I got back home, <clears throat> I realized, looked in the face of the kids that were on my boxing team, and I realized that if I quit, that wasn't going to be giving off a great image. How was I ever going to tell them if things don't go your way, push on anyhow? You can't tell them that if things don't go your way and you quit. So I said, I got to come back. And so when I came back, I said, now, not only would I come back, but I'll come back and show them who the best pound for pound really is. And I did that. And you came back and you all <coughs> won world titles in four different weight classes, also in heavyweight. Do you feel, from now point of view, that going to heavyweight was the turning point of your career that many, many skeptics are saying that you are not the same after coming back to light heavyweight? Yeah. Um, honestly speaking, let me just say it like this. I would like to be able to say that too, but that's not true. I found what the problem was. The problem was, once I did decide to reach the heavyweight pinnacle, my job was to do what Bob Fitzsimmons had done, which at that time, nobody had won middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight title, and recaptured the light heavyweight title mm -hmm. in over 106 years. Okay. <clears throat> so I said, I want to make history. What people didn't realize was, First of all, that was me setting my goal was to make history. But recapturing the light heavyweight title was something Bob Fitzsimmons did. If I didn't do that, I didn't truly do what Bob Fitzsimmons did. That was my goal, though. 
So after I beat Tarver, I wanted to fight Mike Tyson. He would not fight me. So after that, I said, well, I may as well go back and accomplish the rest of the goal because it wasn't done yet until you recaptured the light heavyweight title. That's the whole mystique about it. A small guy going all the way up, capturing title, then come back down to show that you're not really a true heavyweight, and you're really still a light heavyweight, and recapture that title. So I went back down to light heavyweight. The first fight I beat Antonio Tarver, I was in far least mental, or well not mental, physical shape than I was in the second two fights. You understand me? But I beat him in my worst physical shape. But what I did have was I was mentally in shape because I had a goal. You understand me? Mm -hmm. After the Tava fight, I had no more goals. I didn't set no more goals. So then I began to just box just because. Well, who, what you expect to see when you're out there just doing it because? Mm -hmm. If you fill your car with gas and you're not going away, you're just driving, how are you going to drive? <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. Same thing. So that's really what happened to me. Now I have a new goal, and Diablo knows my new goal. I want his title.